Hello, welcome back to the channel, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and here we are back now, part 13 of this Pocker 1.8 Lamborghini Aventador, and we're now going to make a start on step 25 in the instructions, which is here. Now I have got the ordinary kit instructions, the ones that come with the kit. Um, if you've only just picked this one up and you, don't, you haven't seen my previous videos, this is actually the instructions for HK100 that I've printed off of the, um, off of the website the uh, Pocker website and basically these are for a previous model now I've talked before about build sequences and we're going to be covering more of that a little bit later in fact it's in the next step or the next page I'm not sure it's the next step the next yes it is no uh, it is still the same step so uh, we'll talk about some changes there there's also another video you can go and watch which is in my playlist where it shows you a build sequence so they've basically got three different build sequences going on here. Um, there is a difference in these instructions. They've made a change to the model um, from there's, there's two screws and obviously two holes and two threaded holes that are no longer there for those screws. But uh, we'll cover that in a second. But first of all, we'll do this part of step 25. And this part is, is basically the same as the kit. So we've got something stuck there, a little bit of clear plastic now I have done a little bit of work off camera here because what's the point of me coming on and me show you putting decals on so I've fitted the decals in here I've used micro set and sole to make sure they stick down well so we've got a white decal in there and we've got a white decal in there okay so they're done and then we've got the clear parts here that are going to go in and I've got the double sided tape on there and the backing is still on there so this one is going to be this one is going to be the other side <laughs> this one's going to be this side okay so we will remove be careful with using tools in case you drop them on that lovely paintwork so we're going to remove this backing tape backing paper should I say and just fit that into there Oh, look at this. It's absolutely typical, isn't it? It fits in there perfectly first time with the backing paper on there. And then as soon as you take it off, you struggle to get it to go in. There we go. Just give that a push down. So that's it. There's our side marker in. Do the same on the other side. Get this one off. And we'll get that one into there, just like so. Here we go again. Here we go. So that's those in just like that. Easy. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the double sided tape, I must be honest, but in situations like that, it does make life easy. If you don't want to use it, just use some of the um, Mig Ammo Ultra Glue. Dries dead clear. You can use the uh, Micro Crystal Clear, and they dry dead clear. So that's those in. So we can mark those off. Now next, I want to have a look at this fuel cap area. So I've got the fuel cap here. The fuel cap is a chrome part. And we have a little vinyl tube, V05. Got that there. So that glues into the bottom of the fuel cap. So what we can do here is just check this is going to fit. So I'm going to pick this up with some tweezers. Just going to check the fuel cap fits in the hole. I'm not sure that it does. Oh, it's a very nice snug fit by the look of it. So, I think we'll just leave that like that. Let's give that a squeeze. Yeah, it's not that snug a fit. It does need a drop of glue on it. It feels snug, but it's not. Okay, so we'll take this out of here. Put some glue on there. We'll put some in the bore. And then we can push that down in like that. 
as you can see it doesn't want to bloody stay there now That rubber pipe has to be at the front, that's what the slot is there for. So there we go, so that's that glued in. Okay, then we can take the flap. Now these parts are plastic, they're painted, so they match pretty well. Um, there are sprue gates on here and to clean these up I've used my glass files again. Uh, these are the Infini ones, they're available from uh, Premium Hobbies in the UK, I'm not sure where else you can get Infini. But uh, basically, if you use these, you polish the plastic as you remove the sprue nib and you don't end up with a flat mark. Unfortunately, I don't know if yours will be the same, it probably will be. On this gate here, it actually does come up on the surface. So we do just have to remove a bit of a raised area there, which obviously affects the paint. But with the glass file, if you don't push down, it will only remove the raised area. It won't touch anything else and it leaves a polished finish behind. So that's going to slot into there like that and then we are going to take a piece of masking tape a piece of 10 mil masking tape and I'm just going to take that closed stop it keep falling open just like that there we go and then we can turn this over we're going to get our our cloth be careful not to put it down on any tools because you will scratch it Get our cloth, oh come on, Mr. Unprepared. Okay, so we can get our cloth and we need this part here, D04, and that is going to go on here. So we've got a high and a low, so that's going to go onto there over like that, and then we need a screw C. So we'll grab a screw C. And we will stick that in that hole. There we go. As I've said, every video you'll see me screwing these, putting these screws in, they go in really easy because I've tapped all the threads. I've cut all the threads rather than just launching them in. So that's why they're going in so easily. Okay, so that's our, our fuel cap done. Uh, so we can now cross those off. So that's done, that's done, that's done. We've got a decal to go inside there, which I've just noticed, so we'll have to make sure we remember that one. Now then, um, what's going to come next? Okay, if we turn this over, we have our, I'm not sure what it is, but we have this, this cap here. I'm not sure if it's water or what it is. Uh, so that's just going to go in the bottom of there, and that's just a plain hole. There's nothing, there's a D-shaped hole in there, like it was designed to fit on something, but clearly it doesn't. So I'm just going to put some glue... On this like so and then just drop that down in the hole and then just turn it so that the, that the cap is sort of transverse if you like and that should stay there and I think what we'll do is we will grab another piece of masking tape and we turn this over we don't want that falling out and getting glue everywhere do we so we'll get a piece of masking tape and just take that down, just like that. Uh, right, so uh, next bit, there's a lot of gluing to do here. So I think after we've done this sort of, this little step here, this little step here, I think we're going to have to, um, come here. I think we're going to have to uh, leave things to dry. So, um, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. So now we've got these photo etch panels see here we've got these photo etch panels that are going up in the sides and they need to be folded so I'm going to put this over here at the way because I don't want to damage it we've got this photo etch panel and that's going to fit into here those two tabs have got to fit over those two pins like that and then that's got to be folded up so what I'm going to use for this is a PE folder okay you can get lots of different types of these if you for, photo etch folder, photo etch bender, you will find them all over the place. 
So I'm going to put that in there, line that up with the creases, just like so. And then I can grab my razor blade. In fact, what I'm going to do is do it at the right angles. I don't want to scratch that paint. What you can do here, if you grab your razor blade, your knife blade or whatever, you can put the blade in the groove and line it up on the edge of the like that so then you know you're in the perfect spot. So I'm going to bend this one. Nope, I've gone in too far. Or I, I don't know, it's just very hard. It's very hard, that's what it is. Cool, blame me. It takes quite a bend. I'm just going to put a slight bend of that. That's a about 45 degrees. It may be too much, it may not be enough. We shall see. Which side is this going to be? It's going to be that side. No, it's not. It's going to be that side. So that's going to drop in there. Those two pins have got to go into those two holes. Okay, so it needs more of a bend. So get it in here. And bend it some more. So now we're probably at about 60 degrees. And that appears to be fine. When you look at the drawings, it actually looks like they're supposed to be just sat away, so there's supposed to be a gap here. Okay, so before we bend the other one, we'll take this one off. Make sure we bend this one the right way round. Or the, the other way round. Basically the opposite of the other one. So line this up. Those grooves, just like so. And then bend that up. There we go. And that's going to go into there. Just like that. So there we go, that's those done. So we'll get those glued in and then uh, that's job done for those bits. The other thing we need to do is fit this grill in here but we'll, we'll do that after we've done these two. So we'll get some glue. I want to get some more on here actually. This is the uh, VMS Black Thin 5K Flexi. So I think what I'll do here is put a dab of glue on there, staying away from the inner edge. that and then we'll put some around here and that can capillary in around those holes just like so there we go and I'll do exactly the same on the other side and then I'll come back okay so they're glued in so now we've got this mesh this grill going in um, it's a very odd shape. You'll see I've put a very slight bend in it. It's got a very slight bow, but only on this forward edge because there's a very slight bow here. So what you want to do is put it in, and when you push it down, you'll see that it springs. Now the back edge is straight, but this front edge has got a slight bow in it. So what I've done is just put it on the edge of the bench, just to help with the other photo etch parts, and just given it a slight little kick in that area there. 
So when you put it in, when you push down on this side, it shouldn't, it shouldn't lift it up at all. And you can see there it is. So I just need to just release that bend slightly. So I'm just going to give it a little tweak down. What I want it to do is lay in there perfectly so that when I push down on this side, it doesn't lift that side up. In other words, I want it to sit nice and flat in there. There we go, that'll do. Okay, so that's it like that. Now we can take our black thin super glue and we can run it around these edges. And what I think I'll do first is tack it in place. Go over, move over, get away from those holes. Oh. If I can soak that up with a cotton bud gone into those holes, which I'm not happy about. Yes, we have soaked it up. Okay, so I'm just going to put another drop up here. another drop down here and that will capillary in and get it glued in there we are so I think we're gonna leave all that to dry for a while and then we'll come back okay, after about half an hour the glue's all dried so that's all good all looking lovely right so now we've got finally we've got this piece here I've got to put a pencil line through there haven't I We've got this piece here, this cross brace, which seems to carry the boot latch. So that's going to go that way round over those two holes. Yeah, like that, I'm guessing. That's what it looks like. And then we have two C screws to hold it in. One, there's two. I've been very careful with tapping these holes, as you will see, they get a little tight at the ends because I've been very careful with not pushing, like I did with my original engine cover, I've you, you tap the hole and you push the tap wrench to the end and it makes a mark on this side so you'll be very careful of that so just you know stay on the on the sort of shallow side and then the, the as the kit was intended the thread will cut itself with the screw but just you know just go a bit steady at the, um, at the end um, so that's that in place you can see that there right so that's that stage complete except for that deck although I've got a pot on the inside of the flap uh, and then we're coming down here we've got now we've got these side pieces here to go on we've got this rear spoiler going onto these hinges we've got the rear bumper going in those clear covers sorry you can't see we've got the, the side pieces the rear spoiler hinges as the spoiler comes up and down and they've got those clear covers for the lights so we'll see how that's going to go right so I think the first thing we'll do is put these side pieces on. So I've got these here already off the sprue. So that one is this side. So that's going to go over those pins like that, I'm assuming. Okay. And then at the rear end, it's a B screw. So grab a B screw. And then at the forward end, it's an E screw. So we'll grab an E screw. That one's going down into there. Tighten all that down. 
that's that one in place. Do the same on the other side. All right, so they're on. Uh, you can see those in there now on the sides. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's really good moving the camera up a bit because it might get a bit further away. So uh, I'm just looking at this, and I think we need to think carefully about the sequence here. Um, I think it's going to be extremely difficult to get the screws up into the spoiler. So I think the best thing to do is put the screws into the spoiler first and then lift the hinges down and then get the screws in there. But also we've got these two screws here, H, which are going down through these two holes here. And I think they might be impossible with the spoiler in there. So I think we need to fit the rear bumper first. So I've just been having a look at the fit of the rear bumper. And what you will see here is obviously the main part of the body is die cast and the actual bumper is plastic. So when they've painted it, there's a difference in the colour you can see here. In fact, it's not showing up at all on the camera, but I can see it to the naked eye. In fact, yeah, you, you, when you look at it like that, I don't know if I can show you, but as I turn it sideways, it kind of becomes really obvious. Now, I can almost see through this. I'm wondering if I spray some black paint in this area here, if it will actually make it match. Because, I don't know if you can see that, but my finger, you can see my finger behind there. I don't know if you can see that. I can see it in the, in the reality, but I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera. So I think if I spray in behind there black, I think it'll just darken that up and get it to match a little better. We'll give it a go. At the end of the day, if it doesn't work, I can always just take it off again. I don't think it's going to make much difference whatsoever. Um, mark on there. Let me get some polish on there and polish it after. So anyway, um, we also need to look at doing these lights and there's, lot, there's lots around this rear bumper. So I'm going to get this out of the way, like so. And I'm going to paint in here black. See in a okay, I've done that. Now, you can't really see it very well on the camera. But when I look at this, I can see the black through the yellow. It's darkened it up slightly and it does make it match the actual, the actual metal part better. Now, it's very difficult to show you this on camera because it looks absolutely fine on camera. It's only to the naked eye that it looks like it's the wrong colour. But it's a lot better now. The only trouble is when you look at it and you can see light through it, obviously because this plastic here is thicker because it's obviously coming away, we've got this sort of dark light. I don't know if the, the camera's not showing up because the camera's just picking up on the yellow. But um, it certainly does seem to make a difference. Give it a go on yours at your risk if you want to. Um, I, I certainly think it's improved it, but you may not. But at the end of the day, if you do it and you don't like it, if you wipe over the inside of here with some IPA, it, should, it won't affect the yellow paint. It doesn't matter if it does on the inside, where there's, no really, there's not really any yellow paint there. Um, but just wipe over some IPA. Don't use cellulose or anything, because that'll attack the plastic. Um, but yeah, uh, it, you'll be, it'll just come off. You might want to try it with a, like a gray primer color. It's just to try and get rid of the um, translucency of the plastic. But I think it's made a big difference on matching it up when you look at it in the flesh. So I think we'll look at getting this rear bumper fitted. Now we've also got at the same time look at doing these lights. <clears throat> now this paint's been on here for two days now. So that should be a good. No, that's, that's two days. That's one day. Um, so we can drop those in there. So, when these clear covers go over, I think they're going to hold them in place. I think they are. I think they're going to hold them in place and stop them coming out. So I don't really think we need to worry about gluing them. But I think we will anyway. I think what I'm going to do... Well, that stayed in there on its own anyway. What I'm going to do is put a tiny drop of white glue there, a little bit on the end, just to sort of 
tack it in. Now I'm going to use the crystal clear. I have no preference really between the crystal clear and the ultra glue. Um, but because I want this to be absolutely clear, I'm going to trust the crystal clear because I know the crystal clear dries absolutely crystal clear. So if you've ever got like a, a sports car with a you know the headlight lens goes over and it doesn't fit very well go around with the crystal crystal clear give it a few minutes and then go around with a wet cotton bud and you won't know it's there it will like clear plastic now i'm just going to remove some of that from that end because i don't want it to go oozing out so i should now be able to just drop that in Oh, don't twist. There we go. Start to twist. I thought it was going to twist and get white glue all over the black bit. So I think what I might do on this one, instead of putting it on the lens, I think I'll put it in the in the aperture. So I think we'll put a drop there. And we'll put a drop down in that corner. Just in case it does the same twisting thing again. Let's throw the dust out. Bad. There we are. Now you can see the white glue there. You'll see what it dries. It's absolutely invisible. So that's those glued in. Now that the paint's nice and dry. So I'm going to leave that for a few minutes before we start messing around with it because if they fall out with that glue, they might make a mess. So I'm going to leave those for a few minutes. Let them just dry off. All right. So while that's uh, while those lights in there are drying, you can see here the glue is starting to disappear. Um, we'll get on with these hinges on this rear spoiler. So I'm going to give this a a polish as well. So um, we have oh this this little piece of trim here, which goes on. The, there's a little WS10. It's like a little uh, high level brake light goes in there. I previously glued that on so that it was dry ready for the build. So um, I glued that on with the ultra glue. So you can see there we've got that clear light in there. Um, <clears throat> so the hinges are HS01 and HS02. So I think we'll take them out individually. So HS01 is on this side. And it looks like... It's the smaller bracket at the top and it's facing out so it's going to go that way okay does that look right yeah that one i think actually is in fact hs02 looking at the drawing so they've either i've mixed them up in the box or they mix them up in the bags. I hope I haven't got two HS02s. No, I haven't. That's right then. So that's going with the flange out. Because I'm looking at this here and you can see that we have this angled piece here on the back of the hinge. Which is the angled piece there. And you can see it's pointing out. So this one is actually HS02. <coughs> so there we go. So that one's going to go, <coughs> oh my throat, that one's going to go like that and then we've got a J screw to go in there so we grab a J screw tightly, in. two of those. So we'll get our smaller screwdriver, hold that there. So that's going to go, and then we'll grab the other one, which is HS01, but I've got it labelled as HS02. We will prepare our screw, and 
Come way up, Nige. That's that done. I might have managed to get some glue on there. So get a damp cotton bud, just wipe it off. That's the beauty of using the, the PVA glues. So it looks like there's a hair there in the paint. That's unfortunate. That is actually in the paint. I can see it's underneath the clear coat. Tiny hair. That's unfortunate, isn't it? Never mind. Um, so there we are. That's that done. Again, great big sprue gates on here. Clean them up with those glass files and it polishes the plastic. And you can't see them. So there's massive ones on the ends and there's some big ones back here as well. So that's our rear spoiler done. Now I'm just wondering, yeah, with that like that, we'll be able to get in and get that screw in and then we'll be able to fold it, fold it down. That's good. Right. So we extend those all the way out like that, then we'll be able to get those screws in. Um, I'm just looking now. That's like that, that's like that. We will be able to get those screws in, but we risk damaging the front of the spoiler. So I think what we'll do is we'll put this on last. Okay. So. Pencil. Put that away. So we can cross off that one, cross off that one, cross off that one, cross off that one. So now we've got to look at getting this bumper in with these clear light covers. So basically the bumper is going in with two B screws underneath, and two H screws from the top. Now we've got these clear covers that go on. You can see that in here there are recesses. So these are basically going to slide into there and sit in those recesses like that. So that's what we're aiming to do. So we'll get this rear bumper into place. Just like that. And we will grab two these screws. in there why is that so I've got another dodgy B screw here and we had the dodgy B screw before didn't we this a dodgy B screw? No. What it is... Oh dear. This is why I should have left it a bit longer to dry. What it is that hole in the plastic is too small. I can see what's going on. What's happening is the actual plastic around that rear grill is pushing the screw out of line. That's why it's tight. It's pushing the screw in an angle. There we go. Because the hole in the plastic is small What's happening is the screw has threaded itself into the plastic and the metal, so it's fighting. OK. 
Okay, so that's that one in. Right, and then we've got two. What do we have here? Two. Hey, oh, do those light covers fit then? They just slot in there. Wrong side. No, it's not. Okay, I think I have to loosen those screws off. Stop it! I'm going to have to loosen these screws off. Just a touch. And then slide these in, like so. And we should see them on the inside. There they are, going into those tabs. Okay, so we can slide one in. And slide the other. Oh, I need to de-dust them first. Get rid of any dust that's in them. Why won't you just go in, please? There we go. I'm just going to pull this one back out if I can. Remove any sanding dust from it. Okay, then we can turn it over. Thing, stop picking it up. Turn it over, tighten those screws back up. And it's going to pinch them into place, I think. So there we go, they're held in nicely. So that's all good. What we can do now is put some put some of our MIG ammo ultra glue on a cocktail stick we could just put some along there and that should capillary its way in There we are. So we can leave that like that. Just clean the stick off. And now we have to turn this over and we can fit our two H screws. These are going into plastic, so they'll be nice and easy. That'll pull the bumper up nice and tight to that spoiler. Again, put even more of a pinch on those light covers. There we are, it's all looking lovely. Right, and now we need to fit the spoiler, 
which is two D screws. So that's going to sit down in there like that. And then we are going to grab the small screwdriver and we're going to grab two D screws. Screwdrivers are playing really nicely today. When I want one, they grab one. When I want two, they grab two. So that's those tightened and then that can go down like that and it can stay there. <laughs> there we are. So that's our rear end complete. As you can see we've got a bit of a gap in the middle there if you look directly at it. That's where that brake light is. So uh, yeah it's very nice. Very nice indeed. So that is that step complete. So, um, moving along now, now if you've already seen my instructions bit then you might just want to fast forward but I'm going to go through just quickly so everybody knows what I'm talking about. Let's get all this out of the way. There are three versions of instructions for this model. You've got the old HK100 manual that you can print off, this one here, okay, this, I think this was for the matte black one or the orange one or whatever. This is the one I've got here, and the reason I'm using this one is it's more thorough than the actual manual that comes with the kit. Now I, I was only made aware of this thanks to watching Moss's build. If you follow these instructions, um, as you can see we've just done all of this here, okay, we've just done all of this. And then we're going to move on to do this, and this is actually fitting the, the engine cover and everything. And then you're going to put those hydraulic rams in. And then you come over the page, and you put in the rear end together here. And it's telling you to put all these parts on. There's nothing here. If you look here, it's telling you to do this, this first, and then do that bit second. I don't quite know why, because it's going to be really hard to get to those screws with that on. I don't know why you would do those second, but maybe it will become apparent. Maybe they get in the way of the hinges or something. When it comes to here, they're not telling you anything. So what Moss did, he went on and built all this and he glued all that in, in together. And then lo and behold, he couldn't fit this onto the body with those parts there in. So he had to break them off and it damaged the paint, which he was absolutely gutted about. Now, if you look at the old HK100 manual, there is a difference. You'll see here, when we fit this rear end, we have a screw going up here into the back and we have a screw going in from the side and there's another screw here going in from the side. There's nothing going in from the top. Now if you look at the old HK100 manual, they break it down. Okay, so we've just done that. So the next part now, this is page 26, this is page 27. We're fitting the rear end and what they're telling us to do is to put those two in there first okay quite why I do not know then fit these panels then fit these panels then fit these screws in here which we don't have in this model there's no holes either in the rear support for them to go into and there's no holes in the actual bodywork for them to go into so they've obviously decided we don't need those screws and then what they do is fit the rear engine cover which with the earlier manual if you remember we did that before we even fitted the rear to the car so you can do it the way you want. The other thing is, if you look in this one, you've got extra information. They show you in a video on YouTube. It's, in the, it's the second video in my playlist. And what they do, they actually fit the, they fit the hinges to the lid. And then they fit the body onto the subframe. Um, then they fit these intakes in. Here. Just like they're showing you here in this instruction manual. Not like in the, the one that comes with the kit. Um, and then they fit the engine lid. So it's, it's up to you. You could do it any way you like. The only thing I think you'll find is I was looking at, I, I talked about it in, um, in part 12, didn't I? 
these hinges, I was looking at actually fitting them to the body and then putting the screws in afterwards. It does look extremely difficult because of the angle. So you're going to have to fit the hinges in to the, to the engine lid and then put it down on there. So you can build it on any way you want. Um, I'm going to follow this one and see how we get on. And then we'll know then if we, if we really do need to put those in first or last or whatever. So I'll get the parts off, cleaned up, and we'll go from there. I've done a bit of playing around and test fitting and stuff. So these two parts can go in first. So we've got these two parts here, which are L04, and then we've got two screws G, which are little um, M1.8 little countersunk screws. So they can go in like that. I'm not quite exactly sure what these do, but um, for some reason in this set of instructions to tell you to put them in first, and in the other instructions, they're telling you to put them in last. So I don't know why. Um, but I'm going to put them in first because I'm following these old instructions. So we'll put that in there like that. Drop that screw down in. Just pull that part down in. Make sure that one's done up. So that's those two in. Um, I fitted the hinges to the engine cover and um, what I've noticed is that the they will sort of have to go you you can see here there's like a on my finger there's like a step and they have the hinges have to go under that so bear that in mind when you're putting it all together now if you look at the actual kit instructions here they're asking us to build all this up as one unit before we put it on so we can do that if we want to or we can follow the old instructions it makes no odds the only thing I will say is if you fit this to the body when you come to put the engine cover on you can't slide it under whereas at this stage you can so what I'm going to do here is the next thing to do is fit these panels here so we've got these large panels they're not telling us to glue anything at this stage so I'm not going to glue anything but you've got pin on the top there so that's just going to pop down into there and then we've got this panel here which has a groove in it for the photo etch to go into so I'm just going to push that down so you've got a pin at the top it's going to go in that hole here we've got this there's a screw hole at the bottom so that's going to go in to that hole at the top it's kind of feeling like it doesn't want to go in There we go. You heard that click in then. And then we've got the screw hole at the bottom. Oh dear. I've just broken that pen off. Clever me. What a nut. Okay, so I'm going to have to put that in with a drop of super glue. So coming to the bottom of here, you can see where that photo etch is going to lie in that groove. It doesn't necessarily need to sit in that groove by the look of it. Um, it's not being held off or anything by it, so. In fact, it might be better to have it not in the groove because it looks like the more it goes up, the more it lifts it up. So there we go. So we need to put a screw eye into the bottom here. That piece is just going to fall straight off because it's not, because I've snapped the pin off at the top. Well, thing to be wary of, guys, with this model, that it's covered in um, it's covered in pins that are on an angle. So you need to make sure that both the pins go in together, because obviously if one goes in, then the other one won't line up anymore. You can see that it's a bit rattly. I'll, I'll put a drop of super glue in there. So um, and then tape it down. So we'll do the other side as well. So we've got this panel here going in here like that and then we've got this panel here so we get the screw hole in the bottom you can see that if I put the screw hole in the bottom this one at the top won't fit because they're on an angle they both need to go in together I just need to push that one down in like so there we go that's gone in we can turn that over, get another screw I. Big 
a screwdriver in there. There we go, that one's done up. That one's done up. And there we are. So that's our main body work together by the look of it. Now I'm just looking, I'm going to get a roll. I'm going to push that photo etch over into that groove. Yeah, if you put the photo etch in the groove, it sort of pushes it up higher. So, there we go. Right, so I need to glue this in, don't I? What I've got to do is put a drop of super glue in under here. On that pin, and I'm going to push that paddle down. It doesn't want to stay down, does it? Oh, what a klutz I am doing that! I'm going to have to put a peg on it and leave it to dry. So I have to pause the video and. Nope, can't get a clamp on it there. I'll see you back in a minute when this is all done. All right, so we can continue. I've got a bit of tape on there. Looking at it, actually, the actual main body is going to sit on top of a flange. That's going to hold that down anyway. Right, so um, we've done one, two, three, four, and now we've got five, which is fitting the actual cover. Now, as I say, these hinges, I've got them pushed all the way down, and they're going to slot underneath those two lumps it's very difficult to show you this on camera but we've got those two lumps there and then we've got the the hinges here they need to slide under so I'm going to put it under there and just slide it back like so there we go and then that's that will this go up anymore So it'll sit there on its own like that and then we've got to get two screw D's we'll get screw D and hopefully we can get in on that angle now I'm afraid you're not going to see any of this because if I lift it up the, the engine cover is going to tip and I must be honest I'm finding it extremely difficult to see in there This is very awkward. Okay, you can do it that way. What we've got on here is we've got two raised, where the hinges go, there's two raised pins. I'm going to get this screwed in. It's quite obvious what I'm doing. I'm just putting a screw in the top of the hinge, just like we have with the others. But it's very awkward. I can't, you can't see anything I'm doing on the camera anyway, so I'm just going to switch it off. Okay, so you can see we've got the main part of the car now, the main structure of the car. Remember I left this oil pipe off, that's now fitted and as you can see the glue is still soft so I can make sure it aligns perfectly with the hole. So this is going to drop on here. Okay, so I'm guessing it's going to go down and go forward and like that. Is that it? These tabs need to go underneath that. Roof line there. Is everything lining up? I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so on the way it goes together, we have two E screws coming in from underneath. So I'm going to grab an E screw, get that on the screwdriver. So, what we've got to do now is turn this thing over and keep the boy, it weighs a ton. Turn this over and keep that rear body in. Oh, look at these plastic panels falling out. Oh, God. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Right, so we've got a screw going in there. So I'm going to put one in there. Not just, I'm just going to put in a few turns. Just to hold the body. And there'll be another one on the other side.
that's going to go there we go I like the way they, they've designed this kit a lot of the, the lugs sort of go into a, a recess and then the screw goes in so the lug is actually locating it the screw is just holding it together so I'm going to do this one up Okay, we'll do this one now as well And I haven't tapped these holes that deep because I didn't want to risk marking the metalwork. Okay, and then we've got another E screw going up there. What have we got here? We've done those I screws, haven't we? So that's that for now. And then this is going to go under there like that. So if we go over the page, we have. B screws at the bottom. Got two here, so one's going to go in there. So that is going to go onto there like that. That's going to hold that in there. I'm probably working off camera, sorry. That's going to hold that in there. And then I've got another one to go in on the other side. Again, off camera the other way now. <laughs> there we are. So that's got it down like that. That's got it down like that. Great. So now we can turn it over again. Arrgh! Mind me. Okay, I'm going to put a bit of double sided tape under there to hold those in because I don't notice to keep falling out like that. I don't want to glue it in um, for reasons I would explain. We could just get that up. I've also done the um, inside here. done the uh, hydraulic ram things oh dear you can see them there I've done those so that's good um, when you close it you've got to really push it forward and those hinges will collapse and just notice we've got quite a nasty gap there um, it could really do the whole thing with shifting forward it may be worth I may even do it is take it out and elongate the hole so we can move it all forward because um, it's very very tight at the back here and we've got quite a big gap here if I do that I'll show you how I do it but um, I think we can get in there um, at any time because it was quite awkward getting those screws in but this is going it makes the difference whether the body's on or off or whatever so uh, so that's fine um, but yeah, I'm not happy about that at all I'm not happy about those hinges either. If you really push it about, you can get it to close the gaps up a bit, but I think we'll take this tape off the roof as well now. Put this tape off of here. Don't want to risk any of that getting trapped. There we go. We've got our towel, so that's going to be fun. So there you can see how it's all going to look now. So, uh, got some glue residue there, look. We'll have that everywhere, I expect. But uh, we can give it, give it all a big polish at the end. Don't worry about the windscreen, it's still got the protective plastic cover on. So there we are. Um, that's our rear body on. We've got a couple of screws to go in here. We've got uh, N screws. These are tiny little things. So these are going to go into these holes here in the side. And hopefully they're lining up. Yes, they are. I can feel the screw threading itself in. That's going to hold that in there. Oh, me. Oh. <laughs> the 
this is bloody awkward now. Put the end screws there. Again, tip it up on its side. And then that one can go into there. There we go. Again, all those holes are pre-tapped, so everything's gone together nicely. There we are. So I think we'll call it a day for that one because that's about the hour, isn't it? Um, so yeah, we didn't get a hell of a lot done. Oh, one thing I do need to do is check the position of my oil filler. And as you can see, it's a my out. So am I going to be able to move it over or am I going to have to take the body off again? Can I get in there from the side? I'm going to have to take the body off again because it needs to come down and under. So um, I'll do that off camera. Right, I'll see you for the next one. Thank you for watching. That's been part 13. Um, next part I think is going to be we're going to get the front end on and then we're going to start working on the underside. It's really coming together fast now, guys.